Hi, I'm Mary. And I'm Ryan. Welcome to RSO 301. This training is designed for Tier 3 registered student organizations. We suggest that you share this training with the event planners for traditional and major events in your organization. In this training session, we will discuss the resources available for your student organization and the process for planning a major event. Mary, what do you need for a major event? Well, Ryan, we need to know the criteria for cash handling, wristbands, how to reserve Harris Theater in the Center for the Arts, contracts, risk management, and why collaboration among student organizations is beneficial and valuable. Got it. Mm -hmm. Tier 3 organizations have access to the following spaces. Dewberry, the Bistro, the Hub Ballroom, North, South, and East Plazas, Sub One Quad, Finley Quad, and Merton Hall Lawn. You also have access to reserve Harris Theater and the Center for the Arts. However, availability of these spaces is very limited, and there's a charge associated with utilizing either of these spaces. Mary, what should I do if a lot of people are coming to my events? All individuals or organizations anticipating hosting a major event need to contact the appropriate university offices well in advance of the anticipated event. Because of limited venues that can sponsor major events, organizations may only sponsor two major events per semester. But how early should I request my space? Place requests for space for a major event early. Registered student organizations may reserve space for up to two years in advance. For any event hosted in a large space on campus, events management issues an event checklist to the person who originally reserved your major event space. For any information regarding checklists, please reference the checklist video. That's great. Now onto something I finally know about. Cash handling and wristband procedures apply to all student-run events with some or all of the following conditions. Cash is collected as an entrance fee or as a donation for the RSO. Cash is collected for donation to an outside organization. Use of wristbands is required for the event to control venue capacity. When an event is scheduled through events management, RSOs must communicate if cash will be exchanging hands. Events management will notify student involvement if cash collected is scheduled to occur. For all late night events and major events, a student involvement representative will be assigned to the event. Ryan, don't forget the following steps must be followed for proper cash handling. 30 minutes prior to the start of the event, the student involvement staff member and the designated representative from the RSO will each count the starting case and fill out the cash handling and wristband form and sign it. At the end of the event, all cash will be counted to determine the total amount that needs to be deposited. The amount will be written on the cash handling and wristband form and signed again by both the RSO representative and the student involvement staff member. All money should be placed in a deposit bag provided by the student involvement representative. The president or treasurer must pick up the cash at the student involvement office the following business day and deposit the money immediately. Don't forget, RSO leaders, your safety is our greatest concern. Therefore, for events that are deemed late night or major events, wristbands are required for all attendees to ensure that capacity of the space is not exceeded. Student involvement provides the wristbands at no charge. The amount of wristbands will be compliant with maximum occupancy number for the venue. Occupancy numbers can be found at 25live.gmu.edu. Room capacity varies with setup. Once wristbands are all given out and the maximum number of attendees has been reached, no one else will be allowed to enter the venue. Special cases will be addressed where events dictate a different practice. When the last person is either paid to attend and or been provided their wristband, the designee from the RSO and student involvement staff member will count all remaining wristbands and document the final number of attendees in the cash handling and wristband form. Under no circumstances should additional wristbands be given out beyond those provided for the particular event. Mary, how do I reserve the Center for the Arts or Harris Theater? If you are interested in renting Center for the Arts or Harris Theater, please visit cfa.gmu.edu slash rentals for more information. The contact person for renting either of these spaces is Leslie Erminger. For information regarding availability for either space or pricing information, please email Leslie at l-i-r-m-i-n-g-e at gmu.edu. Although renting the places may be costly, please keep in mind that with proper advanced planning, it is possible. Oh yeah, I remember now. When requesting services from a non-Mason affiliated vendor or service provider, you are required to submit a contract. This may include a guest speaker, DJ or performer, and external vendors. Keep in mind that there is a difference between paying an honorarium than paying a service or performer. When filling out the contract, please include the performer's name and the appropriate event information. Please include the beginning date of the contract and the ending date of the contract. Please include the performer's obligations and responsibilities, such as the example shown here. Please include an, a dollar amount within the contract. And please include your mailbox number under the university's address and the performer's address with the appropriate information for the performer and George Mason University. 
You must submit the contract to student involvement 30 days prior to the event. You may find the contract by visiting si.gmu.edu, then click on Student Organizations. You can find the Fiscal Management tab on the left-hand side of the page. Scroll to the bottom and you will find a variety of forms. Also, when planning an event, it is always a good idea to prepare for any potential hazards or risks that may be associated with your event. The Office of Risk Management assesses potential risks, recommends actions to manage hazards, or suggests the contractual transfer of those risks. If your event involves inflatables, tents, power cords, or any other potential hazard, please contact Student Involvement and Risk Management for proper advisement. Also, the Environmental Health and Safety Office can be of help if you need it, if you have any doubts or concerns about the safety of your event. With such limited resources available for event planning on campus, there are many benefits to collaborating with other organizations and different offices and departments on campus. Student involvement and other offices at the university are always looking to partner with RSOs. Remember to use us as a resource. We also encourage your organization to partner with the Patriots Activities Council. PAC is always looking to collaborate with RSOs and bring new ideas for campus-wide events. If you have any questions regarding this training, please email us at rso at gmu.edu or visit si.gmu.edu. And remember that our office is located in the back of student involvement. This was Marion Ryan. Thank you. Have a good day.